pinuri po ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang commissioning sa kauna-unahang missile capable frigate ng bansa na tinawag bilang BRP Jose Rizal. Sinabi ng Pangulo sa taped and message nito na ipinalabas sa seremonya na pagsisimula pa lang ito ng makabagong panahon ng development at transformation para sa Philippine Navy. Wala ang Pangulo sa ginawang commissioning at christening ng barko sa Alava Wharf sa Subic Bay, Zambales pero binati naman ito ang Zambales at ang Navy dahil sa mga nagawa nito. Una ng sinabi ng Navy na pinag-aaralan nito ang mga options para maging physically present ang Pangulo sa naturang seremonya. Inisyal na itinakta ang commissioning noong June 19 na anibersaryo ng namesake ng barko na si Dr. Jose Rizal. Ngunit ipinagpaliban nito dahil sa COVID-19 health protocols. Mababatid na nakafocus ang BRP sa pagsasagawa ng anti-air warfare, anti-surface warfare at electronic warfare operations. Nagbabala si Sen. Sunny Angara sa magiging epekto umano ng pagtanggi ng Kongreso sa Franchise Renewal Bill ng ABS-CBN. Naniniwala si Angara na tiyak na mararamdaman ito ng bansa at ng ating ekonomiya. Itinuturing ng Senador ang araw na ibinaba ang desisyon bilang malungkot na araw dahil marami ang mawawala ng trabaho at kulang ang mga bagong trabaho sa kasalukuyang estado ng ekonomiya na pwedeng ma-applyan ng mga manggagawa lalo na at marami sa malalaking kumpanya ang nag-retrenchment. Ipinunto naman ni Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drillon ng ABS-CBN ay isang institusyon na pwedeng makasurvive sa kasalukuyan. Gayon man, sinabi ni Drillon na ang tunay na casualties sa tinawag nito bilang unfortunate at politically charged event ay ang mga tao na dumidepende sa network para sa kanilang hanap buhay. Una nang inihayag ni Senators Nancy Binay, Risa Ontiveros at Grace Poe ang kanilang pagkabahala sa magiging hinaharap ng mga empleyado ng nasabing network. Ito, tatawagan kita Bongbong Marcos. Bongbong Marcos, yung mga bata mo, sabihan mo Bongbong Marcos. Kung gusto mo bang manalo ng pagka-presidente, kung gusto mo bang manalo ng pagka-presidente, Bongbong Marcos, Sabihan mo yung mga tao mo. <coughs> Bongbong Marcos, kung gusto mo pang mabuhay, sabihan mo yung mga tao mo. Wala akong pakailang sino kayo. <coughs> Wala na akong pakailang kung sino dito tamaan. Wala akong pakailang. Sorry Francis. Sorry Francis Leo Marcos. I respect you. Pero hindi ako apektado. Mga tauhan to ni Enoen, mga tauhan ni Bongbong Marcos to, Armando Miranda. Wala akong pakialam sa inyo. Hindi ako apektado, Bongbong Marcos. Yung mga tauhan mo, sabihan mo, wala akong pakialam. <coughs> Pinagmamalaki nila, tauhan sila ni Bongbong Marcos. Kaya ito, Bongbong Marcos, sana makarating to sa'yo. Bongbong Marcos, wala akong pakailan kung sino ka. Wala akong pakailan kung sino ka, Bongbong Marcos. Sinuportahan ko. Sinuportahan ko yung Marcos. Pero wala akong pakailan. Sabihan mo yung mga tao mo. Kung gusto nila lumabas sa akin dito, lumabas kayo. Magpakita kayo. Wala akong pakailan. Kung gusto mo pang manalo ng pagka-presidente, Bongbong Marcos, Patigili mo yung mga tao mo at kung gusto mo pang mabuhay. Wala akong pakailam sa iyo, Bongbong Marcos. Tinatawagan kita ng pansin, Bongbong Marcos. Wala akong pakailam. Kung marami akong kalaban dito, wala akong pakailam. Ayaw, Armando Miranda. Isa kang suportado ni, ni Bongbong Marcos. Kung sino man kayo, wala akong pakailam sa inyo. Lumabang kayo ng patayan. Kaya ikaw, Bongbong Marcos, pag di mo masabihan yung mga tao mo, bahala ka. Kung gusto mong manalo pa ng pagka-presidente, <coughs> nire-respeto ko si Francis Leo Marcos. Pero ito, mga tauhan mo yan, Bongbong Marcos. <coughs> 
wala kayong pakialam. Yan o. Oh. Sama-sama kayo. Kung gusto mo pang manalo ng pagka-presidente, <coughs> Bongbong Marcos, kung gusto mo pang mabuhay, kung gusto mo pang manalo ng pagka-presidente, sabihan mo yung mga tao mo. Wala akong pakialam. Bongbong Marcos, sabihan mo itong mga tao mo. to Mga tao mo yan. Bongbong Marcos, tinatawagan kita. Bongbong Marcos, may anak ka rin. May asawa ka. Kung gusto mo pa maging leader ng Republika, magbago kayo. <clears throat> Wala akong pakailam kung sino tatama ako rito. So, lumabas kayo. Lumabas kayo. Orapin nyo ako. Naglingkod din ako sa inyo mga Marcos Pero <coughs> Wala akong pakailangan kung sino kayo Magsama-sama kayo Kahit pa kayo sino pinakamayaman sa mundo Mamamatay lang din tayo lahat We The sovereign Filipino people Imploring the aid of Almighty God In order to build A just and humane society and establish a government that shall embody our ideals and aspirations, promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessing of independence and democracy under the rule of law and a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace do ordain and promulgate this constitution. These are the words that embody the soul of our constitution, the Philippine constitution. The preamble is more than just a set of ideals strung together without rhyme or reason. It establishes the foundation of what we hold as immutable truth and guides us as one nation seeking to understand right from wrong. It underlies our very democracy and the freedoms that spring from it. The preamble of the Philippine Constitution articulates a vision of a God-fearing and democratic Filipino people. So that when we are in doubt, pag may duda po tayo, as to the kind of society we are committed to, kung anong klaseng lipunan po ang ating pong pinagdadasal at hinahangad. And as to what government has been established for, Pag nag-iisip tayo para saan ba na meron tayong gobyerno, we can simply go back to the preamble and reconnect with our core. It is a touchstone of those beliefs and values that breathe life into our democracy, remind us of our unique Filipino identity, and helps us define who we are as a people. Again, in case of doubt, when we are adrift in troubled waters, the preamble is the lighthouse, shining a path to safe harbor. Isang gabay, hindi lamang sa uri ng ating lipunan at gobyerno, isang gabay kung ano ang tama at anong mali. Filipinos believe in democracy, but we are also mature enough to accept that democracy is not perfect. Yet, despite its imperfections, we hold that the democratic ideal of a government of the people, by the people, and for the people remains the best system in the world. At a time where so much of what we thought was permanent has been shown to be mere illusions that can be washed away in an instant, the words of the preamble provides a comfort to our people. As it speaks of a vision of the Philippines that is built on equality among its citizens and an abiding trust in the democratic institutions that are meant to protect and promote our well-being. In crucial times, I constantly look to these words that articulate our common vision. As I ponder on the matters that are laid before the house of the people, I do not speak merely about the franchise application of one network, but rather of the bigger picture that it represents. There's no doubt, mga kababayan, this franchise issue has a bigger picture and is more than just simply giving a franchise to a private corporation. 
For there is a bigger picture, one that spreads far beyond the business interest of one family and the concerns of one corporation. If perhaps we had to go through this process without the shadow of this pandemic looming large in our collective futures, then it is likely that many of these issues we had to discuss these past days would have a different weight and bearing. Maaring instead of 12 hearings, baka 25 hearings ito. Ngunit, but as we cannot change the circumstances that we find ourselves in, so we do it with our best, we do it with as best we can, with the resources that we have and the time that we have on hand. Taken against the massive loss of lives and livelihood brought about COVID-19, the issue of this franchise pales into nothingness. As I have said in the past, we cannot possibly measure the fate of one corporation against the millions of our kababayans in the Philippines that are all and all around the world who are now in economic and public health limbo. During these past months, as the whole world struggled to cope with the effects of the virus and the entire nation convulsed with the disruption of our lives brought about by the quarantine, Congress has not been idle. Nagtratrabaho po ang Kongreso. To our critics, yes, we may disagree on many things, yet it is not only unproductive, it is irresponsible, and it is irresponsibly detrimental to our collective efforts to defeat COVID-19 when we give a public and false impression that we in the house of the people have not been focused during this crisis or are somehow not in touch with what was happening on the ground. Nung hindi namin tinetake up, Ang ABS-CBN, sabi ng pangalawang pangulo, i-take up nyo ka agad. Ngayon na nag-tine-take up natin, marami daw mas importante. Yes, as we required of us and despite valid reservation, we have tackled the contentious matter of the franchise application of ABS-CBN. But away from the public limelight and media scrutiny, we have also prioritized the needs of our citizens in response to the current crisis. Aside from Republic Act 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act that provided more than 200 billion pesos for the government social amelioration program and more than 100 billion more for response, including for our frontliners and for PPEs. This also includes, among others, the passage on second and third reading of House Bill 6. 817, an act that penalizes the discrimination of people afflicted and suspected to be positive with COVID-19. House Bill 6953, or the Bayanian to Recover as One Act, which focuses on the response and recovery interventions of COVID-19 pandemic, which we expect to be tackled uh, in a special session soon. House Bill 6815, the Arise or Accelerated Recovery and Investment Stimulus for the Economy of the Philippines Act, a stimulus package with an appropriate created amount of 1.3 billion, which we are looking for. Dahil sabi po ng finance department, uh, we don't have that money. So, congressmen and women are working hard looking for this money. That provides for programs and policies to promote growth and sustainable development in response to the economic loss in the country from COVID-19 pandemic. House Bill 6864, or the Better Normal for the Workplace. Communities and Public Spaces Act that establishes practices that should be observed by Filipinos for the duration of the pandemic. House Bill 6920, the Cures or COVID-19 Unemployment Reduction Economic Stimulus Act that establishes a special fund with an appropriated amount, a few billion pesos, that shall be dispersed primarily for the implementation of infrastructure projects across this priority area. Sorry, I think to the trillions of pesos, no? health, education, agriculture, local and infrastructure livelihood, or yung sinasabi po natin na agriculture and tourism-related infrastructure, as well as 10 other bills pending and resolutions specifically for the purpose of helping our frontliners. We have held uh, investigations in aid of legislations and inquiries to the Meralco billing of our uh, electricity consumption. We have heard the DSWD on the four Ps, the social amelioration. We have heard the different departments involved in the repatriation and reintegration of our OFWs. So, hindi po natutulog sa pansitan ang Kongreso. I say this for the benefit of our Vice President, who, despite appearing to be clueless as to the real work of this Congress, has done nonetheless, nonetheless feels it's her duty 
to instruct this house on how it should conduct its business. Ginagawa po namin trabaho namin, hindi lang po na live sa TV, lahat ng aming mga hearings. I have directed our Press and Public Affairs Bureau to provide the Office of the Vice President or the Office of uh, Vice President Rebredo with the pertinent bills for her future press statements. And so there is hope. There is a light at the end of this particular long and dark tunnel. And no, it is not the light coming from an oncoming train. Rather, it is genuinely the race of a new dawn. This is the hope that springs from the ideal set forth in the preamble. One that cannot be extinguished by famine, war, pestilence, nor perish in even the most toxic political climate or the deadliest pandemic. Before, even, before we even started with these hearings, I, with many of our colleagues, had already expressed our apprehension that the divisiveness that comes with this franchise issue may be too heavy a burden for our already overtaxed political um, balance to bear. Sadly, I note that my fears to some extent have been realized. Instead of being a process of understanding and healing, the take no prisoners, give no quarters attitude of extremists on both sides of the question, lalo po sa social media, have only served to widen the gaps between our people. And as we draw the hearings to a conclusion, we are nowhere near to resolving the political divide. Yes, malapit na po tayo from deciding and solving this issue. Pero po, kailangan din pansinin ng Kongreso yung pagkawatak-watak ng mga kapwa Pilipino. But we must do so. Our survival depends on it. We cannot continue on as we have in the past. The destructive swat left by the virus on our lives had made sure that there's no going back to how we were once, uh, how we lived once before. No, yung old normal, wala na po yun. We're looking for a new normal, a better normal. Pero let's not kid ourselves na yung dati nating alam na buhay ay mababalikan basta-basta. We can only move forward, whether it is dealing with COVID-19 or dealing with the ABS-CBN franchise application. As a people and as a nation, we find ourselves at a crossroads. A crossroad where we actually do agree on many things. Yet, ironically, we remain in disagreement on how to deal with the vital decisions that we have agreed upon. Just a few minutes ago, you heard uh, Chairman Mike Defensor and you heard our, senior, uh, our Deputy Minority Leader argue on certain things. But actually, they are in agreement about the dangers of oligarchy in our country. So, meron po talagang agreement, pero meron po talagang disagreement. Example po, we all agree that we have to get rid of illegal drugs and narcotics. But we disagree how. We all agree that crime is a problem and that must be addressed immediately. Lalo po pag nakita natin mga karumal-dumal na krimen na napapanood po natin na nangyayari halos araw-araw. But we disagree on the solution. We all agree that we have to deal decisively with terrorism. But we disagree on the methods. We all agree on the freedom of the press must be protected. But as these hearings have shown, we disagree from whom and how. We will all agree on the basic premise that big business, conjoined with commercial media, should not be allowed to engage in partisan politics by wielding its power to protect their interests, meddle and interfere in elections, and surreptitiously support certain candidates in the guise of reporting the news. Ulitin ko po ah. Siguro agree po tayong lahat na ang malalaking negosyo, lalo po kung sila po ay powerhouse sa media, hindi dapat makialam sa eleksyon para protektahan ang kanilang kandidato o itaguyod ang kandidato para maprotektahan ang kanilang interes. Sa hearing na to, walang sino man po sa pro o antay ang nagsabing okay yan. Ang naging usapan, kung ginagawa ba yan o hindi ng ABS-CBN at ng pamilyang nagbamay-ari nito or Lopez family. So we agree on the premise, but we disagree on many other things. We will agree on how we must deal with not just the particular franchise of ABS, but on the larger issue of big business and media's participation, partisanship in our electoral process. Yes, we agree na dapat gawin ang tama, labanan ang mali. Ngunit sa issue na to, 
sino ang tama, sino mali. I have often compared, just like uh, DS Deputy Speaker Marcoleta and other of our colleagues have compared the news between Channel 2 and Channel 7, the news between certain newspapers. And without casting judgment at this point in time, malinaw naman pagka yung isang network katulad ng GMA 7 po, no? may negative din naman po. Binibira din naman po tayo o ilan po sa atin. Pero bakit hindi po ina-accuse ng bias? Kasi po walang negosyong hiwalay na prinoprotektahan. So bantay na bantay yung newscast sa kanilang uh, kahalagahan na maging objektibo. No? Hindi ko sinasabi na lahat ng mga may negosyo ginagamit yung kanilang media uh, arm para protektahan ang kanilang negosyo. Ang sinasabi ko lang, we know that there is an evil wherein you put the two together. In the same manner that if I am a public servant but I am also an elected official making me a politician, if I own the largest network in the country, napaka-hipokrito naman natin kung sasabihin hindi nagagamit ni Alan yan para itaguyod ang kanyang uh, kandidatura. That's why we should also keep media away from the hands of politicians but also from the hands of big business. As to the matter at hand, I firmly believe that knowing right from wrong and acting according to the benefit of the public good is what holds our society together. That is our social contract, that those who have will always look out for those who have not. It is what defines and strengthens our democracy. And at times like this, it may, only, it may be the only protection that the least of our brethren will have against the uncertainty of the future. Which is why society finds it so intolerable, so despicable, when someone influential and powerful, whether he or she is a politician, a businessman, a media personality, or anyone in the position of privilege, abuses the very system meant to protect the people. It is the ultimate injustice and the betrayal, pagtatraidor, o yung bantay salakay, when our protectors turn out to be our biggest tormentors. Kaya nga po sumikat din po ang news ng lahat ng ating channel, lalo po ABS-CBN at saka GMA7 at yung iba, dahil po sila ang bantay sa mga abusado sa ating lipunan. When we started this hearing, we listened to the owners and officers of ABS-CBN admit that they were not perfect, and I welcome this. We were hopeful then that this admission would pave the way for a redemptive process. Isang proseso kung saan pinapakita yung mali at paano itatama yung mali. One that would help the nation heal from the divisive nature of this issue. We have had lengthy discussions during these hearings on who and what is right or wrong, what is legal, what is moral, what is illegal, but, or what is legal but against public policy, for example. But given more time, I would have wanted the proceedings go to the deeper, deeper into the roots of these principles and pierce the corporate veil to see into the historical and factual context of these issues being discussed. It is my hope that in the future, we can pursue this matter further to prevent the abuse of the system. Baka po yung Blue Ribbon Committee na uh, pinangungunahan po ni Congressman uh, Chairperson uh, Alvarado po ang tamang o akmang committee po na maghandle dito. President Frank Lynn D. Roosevelt said, The liberty of a democracy is not safe if the people tolerated the growth of private power to a point where it becomes stronger than the democratic state itself. That, in its essence, is fascism. Ownership of government by individual, by a group, or any controlling private power. I agree po with this statement. Pag naging masyadong makapangyarihan po ang isang pribadong korporasyon o isa pong mayaman o makapangyarihan sa ating bansa na parang siya na may ari ng gobyerno, it is even a bigger threat to our democracy. The time has come for us to make a decision, a decision that would hinge on facts, public policy, and existing law, just opposed to issues that go to the core of our democracy. How shall we decide on the claims that it will be a blow to press freedom if the owners of a private media corporation is denied the privilege of using public airwaves for private business that protects their interests and supports their hand-picked candidates while targeting those who oppose them? 
I submit that this is not press freedom. It is the theft of government from the people while hiding under the pretense of press freedom. So this is what we will have to decide. Totoo bang may isang korporasyon na prinoprotekta ng interes at ginagamit ang media para sabihin press freedom? Or totoo bang may mga nagagalit lang dahil tinatamaan sa news nila at objektibo po sila? The use of media for propaganda is not a new concept. I think since na-invento ang news or even before that, meron ng propaganda. We were victims of it during the years of the dictatorship and it has left deep scars of distrust in our views of relationship between government and media industry. Kahit yung panahon po nung hapon o kahit na po nung niliberate tayo ng Amerikano pero inassimilate po tayo, marami pong news doon na propaganda. But even as we guard against the abuse of public officials and the peculiar and sacred place that free press holds in our consciousness, blinds us to the fact that big business is just as likely to use media to mold public opinion and perception as the meanest tyrant. So wag po tayo pumayag na maging uh, dictatorial ang kahit sinong gobyerno sa Pilipinas. Wag tayong pumayag na ang politiko ay didikta sa media. Pero ganun din po yun kung big business ang didikta sa ating media. These hearings, despite the unfair and unwarranted attacks, it has elicited from both both from the supporters and haters of ABS-CBN, has afforded the nation with a rare glimpse on the fragility of our democracy, on how the very pillars that we thought were holding it up were merely facades that hid the ugly, selfish side of the political system, an elitist system that, st that sadly still favors and protects those whose days are spent behind gated subdivisions, while casting to the wind those Filipinos who have to scourge for the very walls that make up their homes. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we are reminded that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. And in every time and in every season, what Ever the Lord sees fit to give, we have to trust in His wisdom. He, makes the he will make the fullest of it. So tayo din po, kung ano man ang payagan ng Panginoon na season, we have to make sure we make the fullest of it. So we may have to make this hard decision. So let us make sure that this decision counts and will put the Philippines on the right path towards strengthening us as a democratic country that cares for our people. And so whatever the outcome of these hearings, I am satisfied that we have heard, uh, and what, what we have heard that can be the basis of a legally and morally sound decision. Whether Congress grants the ABS-CBN or the Lopez's another 25-year franchise or denies the application. Now, as we await the final decision, I would respectfully ask all parties to refrain from making speculation. Wala pong mangyayari po kung uh, magsisiraan po tayo or may fake news or worse, resorting to uh, lies and false information that can only model the issue. Believe me, nothing will come out of it except maybe more grief for your cause as no member of Congress wants to be manipulated. The media doesn't want to be manipulated. Businessmen and women don't want to be manipulated. But kami dito sa Congress, ayaw din po namin na kami ay mamanipulate. Despite everything that has been said and done, I am hopeful that we'll be able to rise above our partisan sentiments for the good of the nation and strengthening of our democracy. I would like to urge my colleagues in the House to put the same energy, the same dedication in addressing the continuing needs of the people as a result of COVID-19. Actually po, mas malakas pa energy natin anti-COVID-19. Hindi lang kasi live ang bawat hearing compared dito sa hearing ng ABS-CBN. As we look for ways to solve the big problems of our economy, let us not forget to devote equal time to finding solutions to the day-to-day -day problems facing those whose livelihood have been adversely affected. Mga barbero, mga massage therapist, maliliit na kalenderya, mga may stalls sa mga iba't ibang mga mall, mga taxi, jeepney, tricycle drivers, and 
both the performing and creative artists, entertainers, singers, dancers, actors and actresses, the entire creative industry, no? not just those belonging to ABS-CBN. They are very hard hit by this pandemic. But it is them who bring color, light, and happiness to our lives. Wag natin underestimate o langin, di ba, ang entertainment at yung kasiyahan na dinadala sa atin. Kaya nga maraming may mental health problem eh, sa lungkot. No? At ito pong mga artista, uh, atin pong uh, OPM, atin pong mga creative artists, performing artists, ang ating nasa advertising industry, yung pong mga nasa event industry, no? Sila po nagbibigay ng kulay sa atin buhay. So, over and above this ABS-CBN issue, let's do more to show them that we are here for them and we're also preparing for a new normal for them. I thank the leadership and members of the Committee on Legislative Franchise and the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability, Chairman, Chairperson Alvarez, Chairperson um, Alvarado, maraming salamat sa inyong uh, dalawa. Sa lahat po ng membro, ng committee, sa lahat po ng authors, sa lahat po na nagsalita, sa lahat po ng resource persons, including din po ang ABS-CBN management, at lalo po dun sa mga uh, resource persons na medyo mahirap at masakit na magsalita, pero ginawa pa rin nila ang kanilang magagawa. So lastly, may I appeal to every member of Congress and to the people they represent, makinig po tayo. Let's listen to the summations that are coming today yung pong magsasalita na isa sum up po niya ang, uh, ang kanyang pagkaintindi uh, at mga i-highlight na punto sa labing dalawang hearing. Let's review important points. Nasa YouTube naman po yan uh, at nasa Facebook accounts naman ng Congress. Let's review yung mga nangyari sa hearings. In that way, we can all form a judgment that is well informed. God bless the Filipino people. God bless the Philippines. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat.